on this iPad a series of quotes, mm -hmm. mostly from people you know well, all positive. Your job is to tell us who said it, and then hopefully... A bit of context. Yeah, you and I can do a bit of digging. Yeah. All right? Okay. So, I was his manager when he was just a baby. <laughs> to get a kid from under six to the Champions League final is the ultimate, really. And Trent is a lovely kid when you meet him as well. Uh, Ian Barrigan for sure. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about Ian. When did you first cross paths? Um, so the first first time at the academy went down there. He was he ran a, a Sunday league team as well, but was also a scout. Um, so this is Country Park, is it? Is that yeah, the name of the team? Country Park. Yeah. Was, was the team. Um, and he just he said to me, "I'm like, do you want to start bringing him up here?" Um, to be a part of the academy, like the youth under under sixes, um, as part of that, and then at the same time said, if he wants to play extra football, I'll play more. He's more than welcome to come along to my um, Sunday league team. So yeah, I was playing loads of footy back then. It was so I used to play two games on the on the Saturday, which would be under sevens and under eights, and then I would play for the academy on the Sunday, play a game for the academy on the Sunday. So I was playing a lot of football over the weekends, but it was yeah, what I'd love to do. So is meeting Ian the first big break? Like every footballer you meet has, obviously, to reach your level, a, a lot of talent. <laughs> yeah. But like just a few people along the road without whom maybe it would have taken a different part. Is Ian one of those guys for you? Yeah, for sure. I think he was the first person um, that well, he was the first person within football that I really felt a belief in me. Um, of course, I think I knew I was I was a decent player from playing on the on the playground, and I could get a vibe from playing with my brothers. I knew I was a, I could play football, but yeah. Um, yeah, he was the person that you know showed that belief in me, and um, yeah, he just gave me a lot of confidence in what I was, my ability, and just just guiding me in the right direction really. And is that relationship, I think it is still pretty close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah still really close with the family. Um, yeah, he, we've got a really good relationship with Ian, of course. Um, someone who, who remained close and was, was always a big part of, of my journey. Okay, so one out of one. Often myself and Alex would have to say to him, you need to go and fetch that ball you've just kicked a mile away. And he'd go off sulking in a half to collect the ball he'd just wellied. So that hopefully that came across in my toe. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. said with some warmth. Yeah. Um, Critch. Yeah. Neil yeah. Critchley. Neil Critchley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you obviously know the Alex that he's talking about. Alex in Yeah. Yeah. That would pro that would be under eighteen. So when I was a first year scholar, I had those two. Alex was of course um, academy manager, director, and and Critch was the under 18s manager. Um, and them two kind of over overseeing that age group and it was um it was a, it was a it was a year that was was big for me it was the one that kind of you know we started to plan how I could make in, make a breakthrough into the first team and start getting involved in first team football and that's when you know the decision to transition into a right back from a midfielder um a role higher up the pitch to to potentially change it into right back and and going down that route was, was first conjured up. Yeah, so that's interesting, isn't it? Actually, as I went through trying to find these quotes, loads of chat about turning you from a midfielder <laughs> to a right back. Mm -hmm. That's come full circle, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? Um, no, definitely. It looks like it's come, come full circle. But no, that was, that was the gist of it. That season was to, um, yeah, kind of mould me into a right back, a lot of studying, a lot of... Um, watching players, watching... Watching who? So watch, you know, the likes of Philip Lahm, Danny Alves, um, just to watch Cafu, um, you know, the greats of the position, the ones that were, you know, the best in the position. That's what my ambition always was, was to be the best. It wasn't just, you know, get to a certain point and um, be just a... No, I, I you set yourself goals, and at first you obviously want to play in the first team. But my my ambitions there was there was you know, always multi layered. There was always, of course, make your debut, then get into the first team, push on, 
to try and get a, a be a a starter name on the on the team sheet, a household name, push on win trophies, do and achieve big things and you know, part of that was to be the best player in, in the position, to be the best in the world, to be someone who changed changed that position and played it in a way that I wanted to, not that what people wanted me to. And I think I've I've always kept that mentality, um, with the freedom of, of what the manager gives me and within the parameters of the team and the system is to go and express myself and play the game that I believe needs to be played to go and win the game. Quote three. I'm waiting for someone to knock on the door and say, guess what? This is a big joke, but it's not. It's a dream come true. I still cannot believe it. A friend told me Stevie Gerrard has written about Trent in his book. I said, no way. But I went into Asda and there he is writing about my boy. And just for context, this is around 2018 in the World Cup squad. Yeah, obviously my mum. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's been an incredible journey. Um, but for all of you, I suppose that's the point that we don't see. We, we see you become a star and a, a top player for Liverpool, but it's it, loads of other people's dreams as well. And obviously your mum's right at the top of that list. Of course, of course. She sacrificed so much for me and my brothers um, and yeah she's you know without her without the family it's it's impossible to be in the position I am and you know to her I'm still just you know a, a son. I have to say I absolutely love the image of your mum in the supermarket sort of leafing, leafing through Gerard's book looking for a mention oh, of it. 100% <laughs> there was no way she bought it <laughs> she would have just been there she would have been in there half an hour just scanning through thinking where <laughs> Where's where's this where's this? <laughs> she was a, yeah she was, I can imagine her there for ages and ages. No way she bought that book. Trent has a terrific chance of making it as a top professional. Trent is another scouser and apparently, just as I tried to be John Barnes and Steve McMahon, he grew up pretending to be me. Yeah, it was Stevie G from the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a quote from the book. Um, is that right? That was the yeah. That was the imaginary player. That was who you wanted to be. Yeah, he was always the, the the idol for me. There was no, well, there's other players that I looked up to and wanted to be, but he was the, the role model, the perfect example that I could have. Um, if I was ever lucky to go the game, it was my eyes were glued on him. Um, of course, I, I watched the game and wanted to, to to learn from it. But at a young age, it was just I was just watching Gerard, his every move, what he was doing. You know, the, the way he'd shoot, the way he'd pass, uh, the way he'd run, you know, the boots he wore, the, the way he styled his, his socks, his shirt, the way he walked, every, everything. You, 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 you just want to do everything the same because you think that's, that's what I want to be. And I think that's where probably my love of passing came into, into fruition was, was through, through him watching him, the way he passed, the sound, the, the style of it. And I've heard you know, people say that before, by the way. Like there was something different when he kicked a ball. Mm -hmm. Like it sounded different, which I've just I don't know, it's always stuck with me. There was, yeah, there was for me growing up the two of them was, was Gerard and Alonso. It was just it was different from, from any anyone else on the pitch, no matter who they played, mm -hmm. no matter who who else the world class players around them. It didn't it didn't matter. When them two passed the ball, there was something different about it. This is a sensational football player. He's David Beckham and Kevin De Bruyne at right back. Mm. So do you want to do you want a little bit of a clue? Imagine that said in a slightly squeaky Mancunian accent. Ah, uh, you got to know. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it's high praise. Yeah. <laughs> really but do you know what? Do you know what I wanted to go with that? Because something you said there, even as a like a teenager, a young man, you're thinking about being the best at right back you're thinking about revolutionising the position. And I really get the sense, obviously Gary played your position, that when he watches you play, it is a little bit like he's seen a spaceship full of aliens land. Like you, have, you, you're not, you don't do it like he did mm -hmm. it. You, you have changed what right back means. I wouldn't say I, no, at that age, I wasn't actively thinking I wanna, I wanna change the way the, the right backs play the game mm. and everything, but. Watching Gary now, all thinking, not like that. No. <laughs> it, not so much. It was just. I know I could play the position, 
but it was how do I want to play the position? Mm. It's not so much just going... So far-sighted, so ambitious, though. It's such an interesting mindset. Well, it was, because I, I, I know and I knew what skill sets I had, which mm. was important. I know what qualities were, were the best of mine. And it was, it, was, it was passing, it was creating, it, was, it wasn't, you know, sprinting up and down and getting down the line and being a, a, an athlete up and down the, the, the touch line. And it wasn't, you know, defensively being the best Defend, defensive player on the pitch every single game. It, it, it wasn't that. It was how can I get on the ball? How can I pass? How can I find my teammates? How can I create chances? And do that. But within that position and being able to do it all in one, it was that's what I wanted. That's how I wanted to play. And that's how I needed to play it. Because if you, it, you know, if I had a manager or if I had someone that, that just wanted me to play it, no, I'm not. This isn't you know in a bad way. But like Gary never played mm. it. That's not. I'd be. I wouldn't be the player I am because it's not it's not me. Mm. It's like if you ask someone else to do what I do and they can't do it, it's just you've got to be you got to do what what you can do. And I think it's important you know your strengths and weaknesses and you play into that and you try and improve what you're not great at, but also you know as much as possible you know show your qualities. Do you think because you're such a unique player, sometimes people struggle to judge you sort of fairly and accurately because you're being judged on if you can do the things that Gary Neville used to do, for example, but actually you can do the things, as he says here, that David Beckham used to do. So does that make sense? Yeah, you're being judged by the wrong kind of set of criteria. Yeah, there's prob it's probably a different, you know, a completely different, yeah, system that, that I need to be judged on. You know, if you judge a striker on, on how many clearances they make, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, you're going to think that he's not a great striker, but if you judge him on how many goals, goals he scores, you'll, you'll think, yeah, he's a good striker. So it works in that way. I think, you know, for me, people will judge me. Uh, people like to talk about me. People like to criticise um, and, you know, talk nicely at the same time. So that will happen, I think, when, as long as, my mentality is in the right place, and my ambitions are in the right, right, right direction that I need to to focus on. Then, then that's all that matters. And for me, it's I know so far it's it's been an amazing journey. And if I keep carrying on and going the, the direction that I want to go, and I believe I can, then there's no doubt that come ten, fifteen years when I hang my boots up, it will. People will speak about the things I did on a football pitch, um, and you know, not many players will be able to, to say that. Look, I've got no questions in my head. He can do it. We talked about it on the phone four weeks ago, and I think he's been excited by it. He gives us something different to our midfield players. Southgate, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, imagine that's about playing midfield. It is. It's about well. <laughs> I, I mean, there's. I'm not, we're running short of time, so I'm not, mm -hmm. I won't fire a load of questions to you on this, but can you sort of wrap one answer in, in sort of, or two bits into one here? How do you see yourself now, positionally, in terms of where you play? And also, at England, does the sort of, the prospect of being involved with England excite you at the moment, possibly more than it ever has? Because um, of that potential role. Definitely. I think the role's different from what I'm playing right now at club, so it's a completely different role. That is an out-and-out -out midfield role, um, which is something ex that, that does excite me and, you know, something that I can see myself playing in and, and thriving in and also being involved with England. Um, right now is, is definitely the most exciting time for me. There's real opportunity. There's, like I said, I've set my mind in, in being... Um, if it's an, an available being, you know, a starter in the Euros, I've got no, I've never had any any shyness around, you know, publicly talking about the ambitions that I've got, um, personal and um, collectively as a team. Um, so my ambition and my thinking is to go and start in the in the, in, in the Euros and go and, and be a big part of hopefully a, an, an exciting and amazing tournament in the summer. Um, but I know there's a there's a there's a there's a pathway to that, and I need to to work hard on on things, and I need to be able I need to be performing. Um, so you know, play well for your club, you you'll get your opportunities for country.
do you still think of yourself as a fullback, or again, are we, are we, am I applying the wrong criteria? Um, I, I haven't. First time you've been stumped. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's 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 difficult because I, I don't think I've ever really categorised myself as a as a fullback. I've just kind of played the game. You. I, Technically, on a on a on a team sheet, I will be a fullback. But what I'm asked to do is different to mm. what fullbacks are asked to do, and what I can do are different. From what I can do is different from what what other fullbacks can do. So I see myself as a someone who who wins games, someone who you know on at both ends of the of the, of the pitch. Um, and as long as I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that and I'm confident in myself to, to go and do that week in, week out, then um, that's all that matters. You can put me anywhere on the pitch. The vice captaincy, I just think Trent is ready. He improved. He developed as a player and as a person massively. Not all my decisions I'm always happy with afterwards, but this one, I know I will be. Manager? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously talking about the, the vice captaincy, isn't it? Uh, you know, Something that I'm incredibly proud of, and something that you know I've publicly stated in, in the past as well that my ambition is to is to lead the club. So, um, you know, to be in the position I am now with the responsibility and the the role that I've got is that I really, really, um, really enjoy. I, I've always enjoyed responsibility, and I feel that now to um, to go and have to perform, set standards in on a day to day. Um, and be someone who, you know, the lads in the dressing room and when they're lining up on, on, a, on, a, on a weekend, you know, look at, look at me, look at, look at where I am and I think that's, that's a player that we're, we're happy to be on, on, on that side of the tunnel with and that's, that's all you can ask and I think, um, you know, so far I've been able to, you know, to step up when, when needed and when, when, the, when the team's needed me and, I think that's a, a true role of of a leader is to step up and and be someone who can who can answer the questions for the for the for the team when they are asked them on the pitch and, and off the pitch and it's um now it's a, it's an honour and a privilege to be in the position I am but um you know, there's there's more ambitions for me. Look, I know I said I wouldn't speak again. I'm massively pushing my luck with Joe, but can you believe it? Just quickly, can you believe you know the kid we started talking about at the start with Ian Barrigan is now one of Liverpool Football Club's leaders. You can believe it. Can't you? <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's. You never get. You never truly comprehend what you've, what you, what you have achieved so far. It's something that millions of kids dream of on a daily basis, and it's something I, I fixated on as, as, as a kid. It was everything to me. Um, but I always, I always believed I was able to do it, and I worked, I worked so hard to, to do it. I worked harder than people. I wanted it more than others. I, I trained harder, I wanted it more, you dedicated it more, myself. I, think, as well. I did, I always I always believed in myself and that's still the mentality I've got I've got today. It's I I always believe that I'm able to do what I set my mind to and you know, as long as I've got that mentality then I'm sure I'll be as good as I, I believe I can, which is pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, yeah. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you. Thank you.